Hi, I'm Dr. Dogris. I am a neuroscientist. I am a licensed psychologist, co-founder and CEO of Neurofield Incorporated. I've been in the field of EEG electroencephalography for almost 34 years now. What did we do today? We did a lot of brain scans. Some pretty cool little experiments looking at brainwave responses, having a cell phone really close to your head, putting the Aries device on the phone, and then scanning the brain again and looking at what actually happens. I'm a scientist, so for me, uh, I really need to see the numbers. It's important to get the data. And today I saw some pretty cool data, which suggests that the Aries device has the ability to mitigate the EMF coming out of a phone in a very significant fashion, actually. So the test with, with VIN was probably the most compelling in my mind. Certainly there was significant differences in the data. We did a baseline and then we took a 10 minute no Aries on the phone recording and then did it again with the Aries device on the phone. Here's the part that really made me a believer. The Aries recording was after the no Aries recording. And this is where we actually saw those values decrease. Theoretically on that second recording, those numbers should have continued to rise. So that means something changed and something really significant changed because it actually brought it down. There was a cooling that occurred. That's really exciting because it's important that we think about our neuronal health and the impact of devices on our bodies. It's been shown in the literature that EMFs at really high frequency ranges and high intensity can damage cells and mutate cells. We have to think about what technology is going to do because we're going to live with technology. So how do we actually protect ourselves and learn how to live with it in a healthy way? I think this is one of the options. So an electromagnetic field is defined by frequency. And so what we do is we take a coil, and then Tesla did this, he's one of my heroes. Um, and what they did was they put a charge in this coil. And the current will alternate from positive, think battery, positive to negative. And the amount of times that it oscillates per second creates a frequency. So if you have one cycle per second, that's one hertz. And so when you create an electromagnetic field, you're creating a spin through the coil at a certain frequency. 10 cycles per second, 10 hertz, and that will create a field that spins right out of a coil. Think a uh, speaker. Speakers are creating an electromagnetic field, but it's a field that you can actually perceive. You can hear sound. But if you actually go and measure that field, there's a magnet there, and that magnet's gonna spin, and it creates a field that comes right out of it. An electromagnetic field that spins at a fast frequency is going to create heat. People really don't understand what the impact of heat is on the body. When you expose the body to an EMF that's really fast in the gigahertz range, there's a lot of spin there. It's gonna create a lot of heat. Heat kills cells and mutates cells. And so as a result of that, you start to have different kinds of problems. And depending on where you have that device, because it's right by your ear, then that's right by your auditory uh, cortex. And that's gonna impact your ability to process sound. If you're on the left side of the brain, then you're gonna hit a part of the brain called Broca's area. And that's the part of your brain that actually controls the muscles that allow you to speak. And when you go deeper into those structures, then you get into the hippocampal range. And now you start looking at the centers of your brain that control and mitigate memory. If you're exposing yourself to fast frequency at high intensity, then there could be a problem. Again, it's the opposite of what I was talking about previously. We have a, a device that's not going to cause heat. So as a result, you don't get as fatigued. I saw high beta and gamma activity increase significantly in these scans. In the clinical world, high beta and gamma excess has been correlated to anxiety disorders and panic disorders, PTSD, those kinds of things where people get really worked up. That's not gonna be healthy for you and what it appears to do is reduce that. Reducing the heat, reducing the cellular damage is, means that you're gonna be healthier. You're gonna function better. You're probably gonna sleep better. There's a lot of different things there that are taking us in the right direction. It's a pretty good benefit.